What's going on guys, John Elder here from Codemy.com and in this video, we're gonna create a default profile picture using static files for our blog with Django and Python. All right guys, like I said, in this video, we're gonna create a default profile picture in case a user doesn't upload one themselves. But before we get started, if you like this video, and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out Codemy.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership. That's all my courses, videos, and books for one time fee at just $49, which is insanely cheap. All right, it is the day before 4th of July Friday, which I guess 4th of July is Saturday, but everyone's taking off work Friday, so uh, <laughs> we're going to try and knock this out real quick today. So in the last video, we created this profile section and we uploaded a profile picture and we're uh, outputting it onto a screen. But what happens if we come back here and click on something, a blog post from somebody else who hasn't uploaded a picture yet, we get an error. So we need to fix that. And we also need to sort of define just a generic picture that will show up in their profile if they haven't uploaded a picture. And we're gonna do that by setting up static files. We haven't done static files yet in this series. Uh, they're just a normal thing with Django. Static files are CSS, JavaScript, and images. And they usually go in a separate static directory. And then you have to make some tweaks to your settings.py file so that they can work. And then you use special static tags on the page to, to output them on the page. So we're gonna set all that up in this video. So first things first, Let's just head back over to our code. So let's head over to our article detail page. And this is the page we were working on in the last video. And if we scroll down here, we can see, let's see, uh, here's where the profile picture is. So right off the bat, we can run an if statement just to make sure there is a profile picture. So, so let's just copy all of this thing here. And let's create an if statement. And I'm going to tab this over so this all appears on the same line. So let's go if post.author.profile.profilepic, and we don't need the URL, we could just say if there is a pick, then do all this stuff. Otherwise, for now, we'll just end if. Let's go ahead and save this. So head back to our blog, and now if we click on a regular post that has a picture, it still shows up. If we come back here and find one like Bob Elder here with a user that doesn't have one, if we click on it, uh, now there's just nothing here at all. And we'll, in a minute here, put something else that will show up if there isn't anything at all there. So, okay, so that takes care of that at least. So next we wanna create our static stuff. So let's head back over to our code and we can see, minimize some of this. Now, static files, like I said, are CSS, JavaScript, and images. And Django treats them differently, separately. And we need to set up a system to deal with those three things. And what we're gonna do here is, if the user doesn't have a profile picture, we're gonna put one up by default. So we have to save that somewhere. We're gonna save it as a static image file. So let's head over to our A blog directory from way back at the beginning of the course, and let's click on settings. And let's come down here to the bottom of this thing, and you'll see this static URL. We've kind of talked about this uh, earlier when we talked about the media stuff. So just right here, we need to make a quick little change. So let's go static files underscore D-I-R-S and make sure that's plural, make sure this is all capitalized. So static files ders equals, and let's put this on a separate line so we can see this, it is os.path.join and then base underscore D-I-R and then static. So we're saying, hey, the directory to look in for your static files is static, which we're gonna create in just a second, and slap that to the base directory. And we talked about this base directory when we set up our media things. Uh, that is defined base directory up here at the top, right here by default with Django when you create your project. And that just allows the, the, uh, the path to the URLs to be system independent. So whether you're on Windows, Mac, Linux, whatever, this will figure out what your path is and then slap a static at the end of it, right? So, okay, go ahead and save that. And let's take a look at this one more time just to make sure you got it here. Static files underscore ders. Make sure this is capitalized. A lot of people leave off that S. I see it all the time. And it's just os.path.join base dir static. And then close your list bracket here. So, okay, save this. We can go ahead and close this. Now we need to just create our static directory. And where do we want that? Well, we want it in this main a blog directory, not this a blog directory where our settings.py file is. 
the one above it. So whatever your sort of root directory is, go ahead and right click and let's create a new folder. And then down here at the bottom, just type in static. Now there's our static. Now we've got a bunch of different folders here, a different, uh, several different apps. We've got our, the blog app, we've got our members app. So inside static, you don't have to do this, but the convention is to create another folder and we wanna put this, we wanna call this the blog. So we want our static files that are gonna go with our the blog app, which is you know the blog itself, in this directory, right? Now inside of here, we wanna create another folder and I'm gonna call this one images and then let's create another one, new folder and let's call this JS for JavaScript and let's create another folder and it's called the CSS. Now we're not using JavaScript or CSS right now. We may in the future, probably not. But generally when you're using static files, like I said, they are either CSS, images, or JS JavaScript files. So you'll create a separate directory for each of them. So now finally we have this images directory and I'm gonna create a new file in here and let's go ahead and save this as just test. So when we do, test pops up. Now we don't need this file, I'm just using it so that I can right click on it and click this open containing folder uh, thing. And this will open a Windows Explorer inside this images directory. So now I'm gonna go ahead and, and delete this test file because we don't need it. We've got this folder open. And the reason I'm doing that is because I have the little image that we're gonna use as the default profile picture image. I've got it off camera, you can't see it, but I'm just going to drag it over here it is, and just pop it right into this directory. Now we can close this, and now when we come back here, we can see inside this images directory, there's the little you know fake profile picture that we're going to use. It's just a generic you know head you know faceless head on a little sort of generic body, right? So okay, that looks good. So now how do we actually use these things? So let's head over to our article detail page, and now we put this if post if the profile pic exists, output it onto the screen. We can now also create an else an else statement. So let's go else. And now we can copy this same exact thing and paste it in here. Let me tab this over a little. Yeah, that's fine. Now, but instead of this for the image SRC of our image tag or HTML, HTML image tag, we need to use a static tag. So that is just static. And then the address or the position of our, our file. So you would think you would type in static slash, uh, let's see, let's head back to our static directory, the blog, so the blog slash images, so it's images slash and then whatever the file is. In our case, it is, let me just copy this here. Boom. And then paste that in right there, default profile pick. But that's not true. When we call this static, it already assumes we're gonna be looking in this static directory. So we can take that off. And so we'll just reference the blog, images, and then the file name. Right, so the blog, images, and then the file name. Okay, so that looks good. Now, in order to use static on a specific page, we have to tell our program, hey, we're gonna be using static. So up here at the top, and in the second line, let's just type in load static. Now, extends base needs to be the first file, the first line on the file, but after that, we could just type in load static. So let's go ahead and save this. Head back over here. And let's click on image test two, and that looks fine. Now let's go back to one where we don't have a profile picture. For instance, Bob Elder, we click on this, and boom, this appears there. So, okay, we are good to go there, and that is awfully dark. <laughs> let's see, maybe we'll change the color of that. I don't know, it goes with this thing up here, so, I don't know, whatever. The picture that you use is completely irrelevant, so uh, no big deal. Okay, so a simple little thing, but you know, something we needed to knock out. Maybe not worth a whole video, but uh, we needed to talk about it, so that's how we do that. Now, like I said, this is how you use images. It's also how you use CSS and JavaScript files. So if you do want to use something besides Bootstrap, we're using Bootstrap, 
or if you wanted to download and install Bootstrap. Remember, we're just referencing it on our base.html file. If you wanna actually download the, the Bootstrap files, you can, and then you would put them in the static directory. The, it, it comes with a lot of JavaScript files. It comes with a lot of CSS files. It even, I think, maybe comes with some images. You would put all of those in your static uh, directory and then tweak it. Maybe we'll talk about that in the future if people all are interested, but it's not that exciting. And I've done it in other courses of mine, so you can check that out if you're interested. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to that channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership. So you pay just $49 to access all my courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDFs of all my best-selling coding books. Join over 100,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codemy.com, and I'll see you in the next video.